Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where, where today I, this is just going to be kind of a rant episode, actually. Bloodshed Review, issue two, is out now with poems, oh shit, I dropped it, with poems by Mindy Simonson, Bunny Wild, and Rich Boucher. And Mindy has the center section chat book in here, and it is called Skeletons. If you look, it's printed on a see-through vellum paper that kind of was reminding me of the X-rayed skeleton on the cover. It's pretty cool. I do also have a poem in the back. It's just, this is such a fucking solid issue, dude. Like, everything in here is just tits. I I just fucking love it. And in the back, it talks about um, being able to get a subscription to Bloodshed Review. I will be putting that up on Etsy. It'll probably already be up there by the time you're watching this video. Hurrah for that. The I Hate Mount Wall stickers are up and available on Etsy as well. As well, of tons of other Poetic Anarchy Press stuff. Because I have realized that we are releasing stuff every week. So, yeah. It's kind of a lot, but there's a lot of fucking amazing poets out there that need their shit heard. And I personally can't stop putting stuff out because it's some weird compulsion I have. So, um, help me deal with my mental issues and also help all of these awesome poets be heard by... A huge audience. There's quite a few things that I want to talk about that I feel are things that need to be said. And I have learned some things about myself. And so I wanted to share those things with you. And I also want to do a little house cleaning. Every woman's dream. A man that cleans the house. Well, here I am, ladies and some dudes. The episode of Poetry Says with me on it just came out today. And it's called Matt Wall is Tired of Being Angry, I think is what it's called. Some things were brought to my attention through this. So on this episode of Poetry Says, I just want to say before anything else that I absolutely love talking to Alice. She is so easy to talk to, and she's so fun and nice. Like, you feel like you feel like a better person after you've had a conversation with Alice. So that was just amazing. Her bumpers at the beginning and end of the show, she was talking a little bit about just, like, her thoughts and on the episode and the things we talked about. Her doing that like showed me something it taught me something about myself instead of trying to remember this i'm going to read to you the email or part of the email that um i sent to her and basically the thing she was talking about was should there be disagreements in poetry like is that healthy to have disagreements in poetry i said i wouldn't have started poetic anarchy if I hadn't been told by editors that what I did wasn't poetry. I don't know if I would release on a monthly schedule if poets and editors told me that I couldn't or shouldn't do that. And then I say, well, I was writing weekly serials for Kindle back in the early teens, but I don't know if that would have poured over into my poetry without provocation. I don't know if I would be putting out a podcast every four days if it weren't for so many poetry podcasts out there that I think are bad or giving bad advice. And then I said, yours in um, Sleep Rickets is not what I'm talking about. And then I said, I don't know if I would have started Poetic Anarchy Press if other poets who felt beaten down by academia and or literati didn't feel that way. And then I said... <laughs> And not really the same thing, but I don't think I would have had I hate mattwall.com if some other Matt Wall hadn't got mattwall.com, you know? So in that, like writing that, I found out something else about myself. And so I continued here. At least with me, everything I seem to do is reactionary. And that's been working out just fine. But the change that I'm going through right now is an exhaustion of being reactionary. 
So now I need to be revolutionary. And that's the next phase of Poetic Anarchy Press and my work as a poet. And then I thanked her for teaching me something and told her how awesome she was and the whole deal. So this idea of the things that I'm doing, I might not be doing if there weren't fucking a bunch of assholes out there who think their shit don't stink. So if that's the case, then I just want to thank all the assholes out there for being such pompous pricks, being the most fucking masturbatory assholes that the world has ever known for locking themselves up in ivory towers and not letting the peasants in for um, thinking that their education somehow gives them a pass to treat everyone like shit that the magazines who only like publish the people they know and the people who come from a good educational pedigree. Um, I just want to thank you guys for being complete and total utter douchebags because without all of you being the just scum of the fucking earth that you are, I don't know if I'd be doing this. And I don't know if all of these amazing poets who I've come across through doing poetic anarchy would be heard by anyone. Okay. So I just want all of you to know the people who I'm talking to the assholes, the douchebags, the pond scum, all of you. I want you to look in my eyes and know that this that you're looking at right now, this is the face of the monster that you created out of your own fucking insecurities. And this will be the last face you see. Okay. So now that we're all aware of how this is going to go down and we're aware that we're only here because of your own stupidity and we all know that your reign of terror and tyranny is now going to end because of your own creation I just feel a lot better I feel loads better I feel so good I need a haircut but I feel loads better So hopefully my glasses are clean enough that you were able to look in my eyes when I told you that. Oh, and then the other thing Alice pointed out to me is that I'm full of rage. (laughs) And it's funny. I didn't realize it. I didn't realize that I sound angry all the fucking time. Because I don't feel angry all the time. I just feel fucking intense all the time. You know? And if being intense comes off is anger or rage then um i apologize and if anyone listening to this like has a hard time listening to it because you think i'm angry all the time (laughs) just know that i'm not really angry all the time i'm just like i'm fucking ah like you're gonna hear me talk about um in the episode i do with andrew or did it probably already came out yeah that's how this is gonna work um i talk about how i look at john berryman is like a mad scientist more than a poet and i really feel like i'm the same way like and maybe it's just growing up watching the frankenstein movies all the time as a kid but when i am creating i feel like i am playing god And when my creations come to life, I fucking lean against the table and I shout to the heavens that it's alive, you know, and I'm a little crazy. And sometimes I need to be locked in my lab for long periods of time without seeing humans, you know, because I got shit to do. You know what I'm saying? My intensity and my drive is something that I know I don't know if it necessarily turns people off, but I know it's something that people aren't accustomed to. And usually what ends up happening in situations like that is that I, at the same time, I inspire people and make people want to shrink away from me. So if I could find a good balance to where the inspiration is higher than the shrinking... Oh, it's alive. It's alive. Okay. 
so um, that is the first part of this spiel, this glockenspiel. Other thing I want to talk about is um, white dudes being angry and what I fear white dudes are going to do. But here's the thing. I've been hearing over the last couple of years more and more people online and people being interviewed and things of this nature talk about how identity politics is playing too much of a role in art. And the funny thing about this is, is that the people who are saying this are, I'm trying to think if there's any time I haven't seen it like this. I can't think of one. So every time someone is saying this thing, the person who's saying it is a fucking white dude. All right. When they start saying it, not all the time, because like I had a great talk with Andrew, which you guys have already heard. Um, or is that part on the first episode? I can't remember if that's on the first episode or the second episode with him. He didn't do this, but I've heard other people, when they start talking about their identity politics and all this other shit, they start going, this woke shit, and I fucking can't stand anyone saying woke anymore when they're not on the side that understands that woke means just being fucking aware that's all that's all it means. So for all of you people listening to the show that have a hard time describing wokeism and all this shit, it just means being aware. Being aware of injustice, being aware of other people's feelings. It just means being fucking like eyes open. I am awoke. Look, my eyes are open. I could talk and I could speak and I could hear. It just means that. There's no, like, grooming kids. There's no, like, whatever the fuck it is that you think woke means, you're fucking wrong and you're an idiot. That's all it means. So when something goes from being just a very simple thing of being aware, being cognizant, to all of these, like, angry, hateful fucking things being said, the plot is lost, okay? So, but the thing that I hear over and over again, and this goes back all the way to fucking, as you will hear on the heavy board episode that I did with Andrew, this goes back all the way to fucking Carl Phillips in 2004, before social media, okay? The people who are getting upset about it are getting louder. The people who are getting upset about it are getting angrier, all right? Now, to me... All this means is that there's a bunch of middle-aged white dudes who are pissed off because their shit probably just isn't good enough to get published places. And they're too pussy enough to just publish the shit themselves. So they need to fucking, like, create a fucking demon to attack. So it is now the woke identity politics. It's fucking bullshit. Be better, write better. See what you get. Okay? So, with that said, hearing all of these middle-aged white men get so fucking angry at being excluded, join the fucking club, dudes, like you've been doing it to everyone else since the dawn of fucking time, okay? What I'm afraid of is that, going back to the thing with Alice, everything ends up reactionary. Everything is cause and effect. Every movement starts because it was rebelling against something else. If you get enough of these stupid middle-aged white guys getting pissed off about something like this, they're going to end up starting their own fucking thing. And there probably already is an all-white dude, I don't know, Anglo-Saxon, fucking fellatio, ultra-male, straight, cis dude. Whatever. Who fucking cares? You open up every zine and it's just like a confederate flag and a gun and then it says Merca. And like, fuck you, Bud Light. Jesus Christ, dude. (sighs) These fucking people. The whole reason why there's anti-LGBTQIA plus legislation going on is because there's a bunch of sheltered religious nutbags who are afraid to tell people that they jerk off to gay porn in their closet. 
And so they have to like be about it. Whereas if they were just around a bunch of gay people and realized that nothing bad actually happens when you hang out with gay people. I'm going to fucking let you in on a little something, white dudes from the South. When you hang out with gay guys, you have more fun. You have more fun. And maybe that's why they fucking hate fucking the LGBTQ community so much. Because gay people have more fun. I don't I don't know. Like, I'm starting to get mad now. The anti-human stance that a lot of people have from that side of the fence, from the middle-aged white cis male fence, is that they see people who don't give a fuck about shit, and they live however the fuck they want to live, and that makes them jealous, because dude... They do the right thing. They work hard. They go to church on Sunday. How dare these people do whatever the fuck they want? What the fuck is that? People just want to be treated as human fucking beings. I just feel like if you really want to make a difference with um, the LGBTQIA stuff and the anti-LGBT legislation that's going on, I think the best thing to do is like put money into it like putting money into fighting these fucking horrific draconian laws and fighting to get these dickhead republicans out of office and i know i've said in the past and i'm not going to yell about every republican but the republicans who are their votes are led by the church you got to get them out of there there's a separation between church and state for a reason and all of these fucking religious nut job wackos who think it's their fucking job to like preach God's word through voting while they're like fucking minors in the fucking bathroom stall. Like, fuck these people, dude. They're pieces of shit. I feel like there's been a lot of normalized views that become talking points with people. And it's kind of fucking bullshit. And, like, if any of the dudes that I'm talking about are really that fucking hurt that their work isn't good enough and they just assume it's because, oh, well, this brown person over here wrote bad poetry, but they're brown, so they're going to get in. If that's really what you think is going on, if that's really what you think is happening, fucking write better poetry. Make it to where the poetry you write is so fucking above reproach and so fucking real and fucking cutting that people can't turn you away. If you really think that your poetry is so subpar that someone's skin color is going to make them get in a magazine above your poem? Doesn't that just speak volumes of what you think of your own work? What the fuck? You know what, dude? This this has been going on for fucking ever. White guys getting pissed off of dumb shit, dude. There is a Bukowski story, now that I think about it. I can't remember what book it's in, and I can't remember what it's called. I, I don't think it had a title, so I think it's in Notes of a Dirty Old Man. This story it is a publisher sitting in his big office in new york in his high rise and writers keep coming in and um like losing their minds on the guy and like freaking out and shit and this guy comes in and he's like why are you rejecting my stories and he's like because they're not any good like you're doing the same thing you've been doing for years. Like, you got to switch it up a little bit. And the guy's like, well, what about Bukowski? You know, he slipped. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the thing. But then the dude said, he's like, I bet if I were gay, I bet if I sucked dick, you'd let me in the magazine and all this other shit. And he's like, that's not true. And he's like, you print Janae and he sucks dick. And he's like, well, he writes some good shit. I just think it's funny. And I think it's an indictment on your own work. If that really bothers you. 
And some of you might be saying, well, Carl Phillips said it, and Carl Phillips is... I don't know. Like, I thought Carl Phillips was gay. Maybe I'm fucking way off on that. Sorry, Carl. Didn't mean to out you if I'm the only one who knows. I don't know. I just feel like in today's world, in today's culture, there isn't any reason why you as a writer, you as a poet, cannot share your work with people. You do not need magazines. You do not need publishers. You do not need anything other than, I would say, internet access, but you don't even need that. You could just fucking go to Kinko's. You can post poems from your phone online to be seen by millions within seconds. And these motherfuckers are bitching about... What, what, what did I even say it was? Identity politics and poetry? Are you fucking joking? Who fucking cares? Put your fucking shit out. Put your money where your mouth is. Put your poems out. Make, here, This is what I want every fucking poet to do. White, middle-aged, cis, male poets. I want you to write a chapbook. And all of you should do it. Title the chapbook. Poems that weren't good enough to get in magazines based on identity politics. And put that chapbook out. And let's see how good these poems are. Put your money where your mouth is. If you think your shit is that fucking good, and because of your fucking paint job, and how you like your dick sucked, that you ain't getting what you think you need, put your money where your mouth is. Let's see these poems. Put the shit out here. Let's see. Let's see how fucking earth-shattering good these poems are. Because I'm going to fucking sneak out of my little box here and tell you a secret. They're probably not that good, bro. You know what I'm saying? They're probably not. And so you need a scapegoat for you writing bad poetry I don't know I don't know think about it but see now what's going to end up happening now that I've said that is that some douchebag is going to go Matt's right I should start an all white male cis literary magazine that only puts out the best work from fucking white dudes that only like vagina. Some stupid ass fucking thing like that. Because again, everything's reactionary. Cause and effect. The whole fucking thing. Fucking idiots. I'm going to leave this episode by reading a poem. Oh, you know what? You know what poem I'm going to read? I'm going to read a couple poems here. Um, I was listening to, uh, I don't know, some fucking podcast on Poetry Foundation or some shit. Sometimes, like, if I, like, don't stop the podcast I'm listening to when it ends, it'll just go to another podcast. Um, and I got bamboozled by one. And so I wrote a couple poems about it. Um, yeah, let's let's start with this one. Right, should we start with this one? Let's start with this one. Let's start with this one. This is called Four People Spending More Time on It Than He. Four people arguing about the deeper meanings of Frank O'Hara poems that were written in a gif, getting heated, voices raised, talking over each other, can't agree. There is nothing deeper in these poems they were written observations from an ADHD mind. No moss on that. How do you get through life? Buy groceries, vote, fuck, watch game shows, figure out if you're going to eat or drink. How do you clothe yourselves when you wake, if you do? How can life bring you any happiness at all? Think less read less this is a bad look on you all right and then this little one 
is called Robert Lowell Doesn't What? Robert Lowell doesn't write poems on the ferry. Great. Who cares? Robert Lowell says no one can write poems on the ferry. Fuck you, RL. I'll write poems wherever I want. An Uber, a bus, a street corner, waiting for the lit up little white man telling me to embark in a shopping basket while getting head, giving head, a laundry room, a dentist's office, during a lap dance, while taking a shit. I just tripped in a time machine and wrote a poem inside your mom's cunt with my thick, white ink pen. Fuck you, RL. Poets of the world, write poems everywhere. Time yourself. Do it as quickly as possible. Turn off your inner editor. Do whatever the fuck you want, including writing poems inside of Robert Lowell's mother's cunt. Well, that was really rough and crazy and obscene. And then I found out afterwards when I re-listened to that episode that he didn't really say that you're not allowed to write poems on the ferry. He said you shouldn't read poems that you write on the ferry. But guess what? After thinking about that for 2.5 seconds just now, that's fucked up too. Fuck you, RL. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Ugh, getting all fucking mad again. Alice is right. I'm full of rage. I'm full of anger. I'm a psycho. <laughs> Good fucking God. I did want to say this too, because this is kind of relevant to what we're talking about here. Late next month, I think, is when it's going to happen. But um, my long-awaited book... Poetry is Bullshit, The Poetic Anarchist's Guide to Writing Poems is going to come out. And the reason why it's kind of held up right now is that I'm writing a manifesto <laughs> to open the book. And it's funny because I was listening to an episode of Heavy Board and, <laughs> and Andrew said something like, like something along the lines of only extremists and psychopaths write manifestos. And I was just like, oh, a little, a little too close to home there, buddy. <laughs> oh, fuck me. But yeah, so as soon as that's done, um, like, obviously, I'm going to let you guys know about it. But yeah, so that's going to be a big ass book. So that'll be an Amazon order for sure like right now it has um i want to say 120 chapters i think plus my introduction plus now a manifesto on top of it so um that's gonna be um quite the quite the bitch there so anyway um i don't know if um my new chapbook drinking less will be out by now but um if it is it is and um, let's get into some butt plug territory here, now that I've ran the liquor as long as I have. So, I want to give a big thank you to all you motherfuckers over on Patreon. Michael, Cedar, Harry, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I want to give a thank you to those in the thank you crew. To Patrick, to Britt, to Jan, to Deb, to Ethan, to Julia. Thank you guys so much for your continuing support of everything I do here. And for those big, beautiful motherfuckers in the Anarchy crew, I want to give a big thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Mitty, to Thomas, to Tim J, to Shaylin, to Tim G, to Chill Baby, to Tamara, to Adam, to Chase, to JH, to Jessica. You guys are amazing. Thank you. And for the biggest thank you of all, big thank you and hugs go to the number one chappy in the Chapbook of the Month Club. Caitlin, thank you so much for being as fucking badass as you are. You're amazing. You're amaze balls. Here's some balls. You amaze them. Rest of the butt plug territory. Join the Anarchy Crew. Do the right thing. You know you want to. What the fuck? If you're a, a real mamma jamma, just get in the chat book of the month club. Like a big swinging dick. Do the fucking thing. Bloodshed Review Issue 2 is out now. Uh, the Blood Rag issue 13 is available for a free download on my website, or you could get a copy of it at my Etsy shop, and you can also get a year subscription to the Blood Rag through there as well as the year subscription to the Bloodshed Review. And for those of you who are going to get um, the subscription to Bloodshed Review, um, there is going to be a Blood Rag put in 
the um, issue so you can just pull that out that way you don't have to do two things making it easy for you also pick up winner your mom's sodomy prize for poetry project broadside out now there's tons of stuff that's out you want a sticker you want a t-shirt you want a fucking bandana tell me what you want and I'm gonna give it to you that's the kind of lover I am okay so anyway everybody um, the next episode will be I think the second episode of um, my talk with Andrew from Heavy Board. So I hope you enjoy that. Oh, we're getting close to 100 episodes here, guys. So what I want to throw your way, and I heard Alice do this, and I thought it was beautiful, so I want to do this too, because I am nothing but a good plagiarist, just like all the best formalists out there. So this is what I want, okay? I want to do a Q&A episode, but I want to hear the words coming out of your mouth holes, okay? So, record yourself. Ask me whatever question you want, as many questions as you want, whatever it is. Let me be lulled into a false sense of security by your beautiful voice, okay? And then we will do that. So, because it's going to be a little bit, because I think this is... This might be episode 90. I don't know. This is an episode of some number of some kind. But with the way I put out episodes, episode 100 could be in 48 hours. So I don't fucking know. But anyway, send me those fucking questions. Okay, guys? Just send them to I hate Matt Wall at Gmail. Doot Coom. All right? So keep buying our books. Support Poetic Anarchy Press. Type hard, motherfuckers. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.